Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Develop with Git in Eclipse. In the last episodes I talked about how to add contents to Git repository and how to push that repository to remote server. In this episode I'm going to talk about how to collaborate with multiple people on the same project using this remote copy of the repository as a synchronization point. So what I want to do in this episode is add a collaborator to our project, let him do some changes, let him push these changes to our remote GitHub repository and pull these changes back into my IDE so I can work on them. First thing I do in order to achieve this is go to GitHub and uh, add a collaborator to our repository. This is actually fairly easy over, over GitHub because I only go to settings then there is this neat collaborators uh, thing and I already added my friend Sven here as a collaborator to the project. There are actually other uh, possibilities of collaborating over GitHub but this is the easiest one and as long as you trust, uh, fully trust your collaborators um, you can do it like that. Fully trust because is because he Sven now has full access to my repository as you can see up here so he can basically change everything. If you have different kinds of relationships to your collaborators, um, so different in the sense of not being the same person, then you might consider using something like a fork or things, but I'm not going to talk about these possibilities in this episode. Okay, so as I just said, I added Sven as a collaborator to this uh, repository and he actually has full access rights now. What I'm going to, to, to do next is uh, change my hat and take on the role of Sven who is now going to work on my project. Ta-da! And with just a snap I uh, changed my identity to Sven and as you can see I have full access to uh, this Git repository or at least you see I can read it and what I want to do next is actually create a copy of this project on my local machine for uh, me to work on. So creating a copy of another repository is called cloning this repository in Git terminology and actually you can see here that there is the SSH clone URL um, that I'm going to copy right now in order to clone uh, this repo remote repository to my local machine as well. I already uh, created a new workspace for me to work in and in this workspace I'm now going to create a clone of the repository. So I right click into the package explorer and say import uh, filter for git and say import projects from git. Hit next. As I just explained you I want to clone the repository so I say I want to, uh, I want to import from a clone URI and then we come to this already familiar wizard we used to create a repository in the first place. Um, again, he already pasted the, the contents of my clipboard, so I'm just going to select that this is an SSH URL and already everything is set up. I'm going to go to next and now he's going to ask for my SSH key. I'm going to paste in here my SSH key and say OK and then go to next because there's only one possibility here and I'm going to say okay just take the default uh, repository location with it, which is my home and then git uh, let's develop with git just a repository name go to next and then what he just did what took some time is actually create the clone of the git repository and the next step eGit automatically, automatically starts for me is importing the projects from within that repository. Since I checked in the whole projects including the .project files, I'm going to import this existing repositories now into my workspace by just clicking next. And um, what you see here is that he detected my library project and the project project um, which I'm going to import into my workspace just by clicking finish. This takes him some time and um, we can actually see that there is an error now. Let me just check. Is missing required source? Ah yeah, okay, this makes sense. Um, 
I already talked about this in the last episode that there is it was this source folder not checked in to the version control system because Git actually only manages files. And since the source folder was empty, um, it was not checked into version control. So um, consequentially, it was not checked out from version control uh, when I created this clone and is not there. But since the project expects the source folder to be there, it now issues an error. So to fix that, I'm just going to create this source folder. And as you can see now, we're, uh, we get rid of this error. And uh, we have again this source folder that is marked as not under version control from the eGit plugin. Okay, so this was all that is required to set me up for working on the projects. And I'm going to do exactly that right now by creating a class uh, with the creative name of foo in another namespace. Um, this just for demonstration doesn't make any sense. Uh, of course it's not a slash but a dot. I'm going to create this class. I'm not going to create any sensible uh, contents here because that's not the point of what I'm doing. But I created a new file and I want to check in this change uh, to the project for the Let's Developer to access it. So I'm going to team um, commit and I say a commit message created a very important file uh, this is of course not the most descriptive thing to do and I'm going to say okay this was a change made by me um, as an author and as a committer and this change adds this very file and I want to commit that as you might have recognized, it just pushed only the commit button and not the commit and push button uh, as I did the last time. And uh, as a consequence, the eGit plugin now shows me with this little annotation here, this arrow up one, that there's actually one commit on my local machine that is not on the server. So I have uh, changes stored on my local machine that are not yet published to the server. This is a very neat thing for one I don't forget about it because eGit tells me that there's something to do and uh, for another thing I can do commits offline so I don't need to uh, publish them to the server directly so I can do a couple of changes um, commit in the meantime maybe do some other changes and in the end when I'm convinced that everything's right I'm going to push that to the server for now I'm going to push uh, or change to the server immediately by saying uh, right click on the project, go to team and say uh, push. Now he's going to do some fancy stuff and afterwards he's te he tells us that he pushed um, our changes. This created a very important file change set to the remote repository you see down here. So I just say confirm and now you see that this marker is gone so actually we have the change on GitHub. Let's check this out. I'm going to refresh this real quick and we can see that the last commit message is our very descriptive created a very important file message. Uh, the change was authored by me about two minutes ago and it's, it actually targets this complex library thing here. So, okay, that was the whole round trip for me as Sven. I created a clone of the repository. I made a change to this clone in Eclipse and I committed and pushed the changes back to GitHub. Now I'm going to uh, switch my heads again back to be the Let's developer and uh, I'm going to pull these changes again from GitHub. As you can see, I just uh, changed my identity again, so I'm Let's Developer, and I see now that there's this change from Sven, and I want to have this change in my local IDE. Doing this is actually fairly easy. I just switch back to Eclipse, and as you can see here, um, I'm, all, I'm still in the, in the previous state where this source folder was empty. So what I'm going to do is right-click the project, go to team, and say fetch from upstream. Now he's asking me for my, uh, for my key again, which I'm going to paste in real quick. Okay, so he's fetching changes, and he's telling me that there was actually one change uh, 
he fetched from the remote repository. Another thing I have to do in order to see this change is actually do a pull. Could have done a pull directly, um, but it does not hurt to do it in two steps. So now he tells me that uh, he did a fetch again. That's what, why I could have done it directly because he does the fetch here and he says to me, okay, there was nothing to fetch, but he did a pull and he updated our repository um, with actually this, this, these change stats here. So I'm just going to press OK and what we see now is that another workspace with our uh, very important class foo is now also on my machine so I can open it and uh, work on the things, spend it. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this episode, please uh, consider to give me a thumbs up if not, just let it be. Um, if you're interested in the content I'm doing and you don't want to miss any episode, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel or just follow me on Twitter. I post uh, regular updates on everything I do. If you want to see the other episodes I did on Eclipse, uh, using Git in Eclipse, uh, see my playlist. And of course, uh, you could check out all the other series I'm doing, like uh, Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse or the Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. That's it for today. Thanks again for watching. Uh, drop, drop me any comments if you have feedback or ideas. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.